all right so we'll start with the income topics uh, today we'll be completing the income and then tomorrow we'll be moving to the foreign related topics foreign income exclusion foreign tax credits and everything okay so quickly we'll start in income we are going to cover about the wage salaries other income special rules for certain employees where we are going to understand clergy related uh, income those who are a church employees for them how the income will be uh, you know taxable interest income dividend income ira we have already covered yesterday so that is the that uh, part where you are going to get a distributions at that time when you include it in the income it is related to this okay social security benefit also we have done it yesterday then we'll cover rental income business income and some additional incomes okay so let's start quickly wages salaries and other income if you are earning a wage income then whether it's going to be taxable in your tax return or not being an employee it will be included in your in your gross income okay and employee should attach copy b of form w2 to the federal tax return okay the employer when they are going to pay the wages to the employee obviously they will be reducing certain taxes in the form of payroll tax and all right so employer is going to file a w2 form with irs they will give you one copy copy b copy a will go to the irs copy b will go to the uh, employee from whom the payroll taxes are deducted and the copy c will be retained by him for the future records okay so being an employee it will be included in the gross income employee should attach a copy b to the w2 form and if they receives 1099 nec this we have already seen in the class that if you are a statutory employee right if you remember statutory employee we had four conditions plus three categories right what were the four conditions if you are a driver and uh, you are distributing the beverages uh, except milk right if you are a life insurance policy se seller right insurance agent you are you are a city sales person right all those four types of categories we have already seen if you fall under any of these four categories you are going to call as a statutory employee if you fulfill three conditions you don't have any personal investment all the materials and everything substantial investment is of employer not of employee and you are performing the whole services on your own that is what we called as a statutory employee which we have already done and in your uh, book also i think there will be uh, some definitions mentioned so when you are going to receive a w2 form as an employee you include it in a gross income okay second thing is employee should attach it to the cop, uh, copy b of the w2 to the return third thing is if you receive a 1099 nec it will be a non employee compensation it will be uh, reported by the employer to the employee but employee will not include it on the w2 form but it will be included on the schedule c as a uh, as a income what is schedule c schedule c is related to the business income right and because their employer did not consider them as an employee they might have not deducted the uh, social security or medicare so for that type of particular uh, you know uh, treatment you are going to file a form 8919 to report uncollected social security and medicare taxes on the wages because you are not an employee they might have not collected the social security medicare so you will be filing a separately uh, mentioning it separately in your tax return in the in the way of 8919 form okay employer will be reporting the annual employee compensation to the employees on form w2 as i mentioned okay if you are going to receive any scholarship or fellowship grant that were not reported taxpayer on w2 but now reported it will be now reported on schedule 1 okay some scholarship and fellowship grants or anything which have been provided but which is not mentioned on your w2 form will be reported on the schedule 1 okay schedule 1 will be regarding the additional incomes which are not mentioned on the page 1 of the 1040 okay next is child care provider if you are providing the services of a child care facility day care facility right so being an employee you are still going to include it in the gross income being an uh, who are not an employee must include it as a schedule c as a business income let's say you are working in a child care facility as an employee you will be receiving the w2 from them you will be including on the gross wages so the basic idea is what when you are going to receive a wages a salaries or any other earning from your employer you are going to include it on your 1040 return as a wages as a taxable income gross wages 
okay next is foreign income foreign income when we do the uh, tomorrow's topic when we are going to take this uh, foreign income earned income exclusion and foreign tax credit in detail we'll understand over there right now uh, i'll just tell you the basic thing is when you are residing in us and if you are a us citizen okay if you are a us citizen and you are a resident alien right and if you are having a earned plus unearned income then in that case what will happen all the world income will be taxable if you are residing in us and you are a us citizen then you should report all income including any source within us any source outside us all will be included in the tax return but let's say you are a us citizen you are a resident you are not a resident you are residing outside us then you may be able to exclude certain part so this is what we will refer to as foreign earned income exclusion this will do tomorrow when we do the foreign related earnings topic today we are going to just focus on gross income all the earned and unearned income i'll cover it quickly okay for this foreign income we'll take a wholly different session tomorrow in which we'll also see that how much credit will be applied on the foreign taxes which you have paid okay next is advance commission advance commission means what let's say in current year i am going to receive certain commission but which will be used my performance of the services will be done in the next year so if i am a cash basis taxpayer now what i will do i will be including whatever advance commission i have received in the year of receipt okay so this will also be your earned income this all right now what we are learning is all your earned income you have to understand the difference between earned and unearned because in certain topics we will have the different different criteria okay cost of living allowance and reimbursement see it happens that the employer is going to provide some cost of living allowance to their employees okay so if it is provided to the employees and the incentive is for taking a less desirable assignment as a part of compensation it will be included in the income okay or any other reimbursement which is being provided by the employer let's say uh living expense or any xyz expense which is for living allowance which has been provided by the employer to the employee will be included in the income there is no exception any benefit which employer is going to provide to the employee will be included in the income of the employee gross income it will be added okay but there is one exception if you are a federal civilian or a federal court employee you which where you are stationed at is where you are working in alaska hawaii or outside the united state and while working over there the reimbursement and living allowance are provided to you by the employer if this thing happens then only it is allowed as a, a exception like it will not be included in income remember this exception only this type of employees federal civilian federal court employees stationed at alaska hawaii or outside united state for them if you are going to receive a cost of living allowance or any reimbursement from your employer then it will not be included in the income but rest all employees if you are uh, you know living in normal like in united state only you receive any living allowance from your employee it will be uh, included in your income okay for any other type of employee here it is mentioned it will be included in income okay next is back pay back pay means what uh, let's say i have uh, you know incurred certain amount uh, i have provided certain services but yet not received the income or received a lesser income in let's say next year i am going to recover my uh, wages and salary which was not paid in the previous year so it is a back pay this includes payment made to a person for any damages any unpaid life insurance premium any unpaid health insurance premium so any this kind of payment which has been paid by the employer to the employee any damages or any unpaid amount from the previous income right if it is received by the employee it will be included in the income for employer what will be the treatment they will report it in the w2 form and taxes will be deducted actually it is a it is a payment right from employer to employee so it will be included in the w2 form taxes will be deducted and for employee it will be included in the income back pay is nothing but just remember like any any previous payments which are now being made okay it's called back pay next is bonuses and awards if employer is providing any bonuses and awards to the employee it will be included in the income okay then if the award is for good or uh, for the goods or services instead of providing some cash you provide uh, you get a uh, you know amount in kind okay then in that case what will happen 
it will include it in the income the fair market value of that particular goods or service will be included in the income and the employer will be showing it as a w2 now here one exception we will see is prizes and rewards okay prizes and rewards are the kind of thing where if you receive a prizes and the rewards once in a five year okay once in a five year if employer is going to receive the prizes and the rewards then it will be excluded okay so there are certain exceptions we'll see later on but this this topic is talking about bonuses and awards. If you receive certain bonus, right? Uh, let's say overtime bonus you receive or uh, some, uh, you know, uh, reaching an extra mile if you receive a bonus, uh, reaching an extra target you receive a bonus from your employer. So any benefit, as earlier I mentioned, any benefit which is received from the employer will be included uh, in your uh, this tax return and in your W-2 form okay severance pay severance pay means what any back pay kind of transaction only but i can say if you have an unpaid leave of let's say 12 days but in current year you have utilized only six days as a uh, leave okay but sir remaining six days whatever is left it has been carried forward to next year or the second option is you can take a, a compensation which is equal to the six day payment right this is called a severance paid so any amount this includes any payment which is received for accrued leaves and monies withheld from the severance for the outplacement services okay any accrued leave or if any money is withheld from the severance for any outplacement services these two kind of payments are called as severance pays same line i'll repeat again any benefit which is given by the employer to the employee in the form of cash or in the form of kind will be included in the income so include any income due to cancellation of employment contract let's say we have some contract and due to the cancellation uh, maybe employer is going to pay me certain amount for example okay so income due to cancellation of employment contract must be included in the income okay include the unreduced amount of severance pay in the income what is unreduced amount guys whatever is the gross pay will be included any taxes withholding or everything which is deducted will not be considered any severance pay means the six day leave you have not taken so for that you are taking the equal compensation for that six days okay that will be included in your income got it guys now this is important one on sick pay a lot of questions are asked sick pay disability income will be asked tip income these are the important important whom i am marking as important please make sure you guys read it very well and in detail from your regular book okay sick pay is taxable means it will be included in the income it will not be taxable only in the situation where employee paid the premium on accident and health insurance policy only on these two policies accident and health insurance policy if you are going to receive a sick pay let's say you are sick and you are going to receive a payment from an insurance company now you have to check that insurance company's uh, premium was paid by whom if employee himself is paying the premium then it won't be taxable right let's say a, a company a, x and company is a insurance company and for mr a mr a is the employee employee right this person has taken his own insurance right and now he is sick he is taking the medical uh, reimbursement from the company right so in that case what will happen whatever premium which he has paid now up to that amount it won't be taxable but let's say instead of mr a his company has paid it paid the premium right his employer has paid the premium so whatever reimbursement he is going to get the sick pay which he is going to take from the company it will be included in his tax return as a wage income as a sick pay okay but sometime what will happen now uh, both the employee and employer has taken certain insurance uh, policy right so what will happen only the portion you have to divide it into two parts what is the employee's portion what is the employer's portion whatever is the employee's portion it will not be taxable employee's portion of premium let's say employee is uh, taking hundred dollars as a premium employer is paying hundred dollar as a premium now when you take a sick pay from this insurance company you took a five thousand dollars okay so can i say twenty five hundred dollar that was pertaining to the employee share like fifty percent of a premium was paid by employee that will be not taxable and fifty percent which is paid by the employer that will be taxable okay and when i say taxable means it will be included in wages today right now we are learning all employee related uh, incomes okay so employee must include the income 
sick pay benefit received from any of the following payers who can be the person who will be paying is welfare fund state sickness or disability fund okay they can receive the sick pay from the welfare fund from a state sickness or disability fund from an association of employer or employees they might have created an internal association from them if they are going to receive it and the premium is paid by the employer then it will be taxable any insurance company if employer paid for the plan if employer is paying for that plan to the insurance company and if they are taking the sick pay from that insurance company it will be taxable okay got it guys sick pay is important i'll repeat again myself next is disability income again the, this one is important disability income means what let's say uh, uh, the person has become disabled right due to any reason due to uh, reason of any let's say of a worker is working in a factory or any manufacturing unit and due to uh, due to the work condition he became disabled okay then when he is going to receive the disability income at the time of this is disability when he is going to receive certain income same treatment which we saw in the sick pay will apply over here means if employer is paying for the plan employer pays the plan premium then it will be taxable but if employer is not paying employee himself is paying the premium then it is not taxable and if it is partially paid by both of them employee and employer then partially will be taxable the taxable will be only the employer part of premium as i mentioned whatever benefit the employer is going to provide to the employee everything should make taxable to the employee right so here the portion of the employer will get taxable in the employee's tax return the portion of employer's premium which employer is paying okay non taxable portion is what employee's part of premium okay so you will have to proportionate both of them between the employer and the employee non taxable is what reimbursement for medical expense incurred after the plan was established now let's say the plan has already been established later on the reimbursements are done of medical expense let's say i have incurred a medical expense on 1st of jan the plan has established on 31st of jan means this insurance policy plan by the employer is established on 31st of jan so whatever this medical expense i have incurred my employer will be reimbursing it to me later on right so this reimbursement was done after the plan was established but the policy the expense i incurred was before the plan okay so this will not be taxable even though the employer is paying me i know employer benefit any anything which is given to the employee is taxable but since the payment is made after the establishment of the plan it will not be taxable okay next is taxability we have already seen if the employee is uh, you know uh, getting any amount in the form of disability income and the premium is paid by the employer then it will be taxable okay same way sick pay disability pay we have accident or health plan if it is covered by the employee okay then it is not taxable but health coverage provided by the employer it will not be included provided by the employee provided by the employer this is an important you'll have to remember in case of sick and disability income what was the case that when it was included sorry when the premium was paid by the uh, employer it was included here in case of health accident plan health or accident plan see here what it is disability income here it is sick pay okay here it is health or accident plan if it is provided by employer then also it is not going to be included in the income accident or health plan remember the word okay benefit received from the plan may be taxable means can i say when the when the uh, employer is paying the premium this premium will not be taxable but when the person is getting uh, is uh, you know met with an accident or due to any health related plans when they are going to receive the benefit it will be taxable only the benefit okay let's say the premium was dollar 100 but when he received the benefit of 1000 dollars so 1000 minus 100 whatever is the 900 the extra benefit which is receiving okay 100 was the premium that is the cost this is the amount which he is going to receive from the company insurance company right so whatever is the remaining extra benefit which is going to receive will be taxable 
got it guys uh, next is fringe benefit fringe benefit will be included in the income what are whatever are the small small uh, you know benefits which are given by the employer to the employee will be included in the income it will be excluded only if excluded by the law excluded by the law and if the employee paid the fair market value of the benefit let's say i have received a certain benefit from my employer and i am paying him certain amount fmv or a lesser amount if i pay so whatever extra benefit which i am getting from him will be included in my income that is fringe benefit or i can say uh, let's say my employer has restricted me to perform certain services under a certain agreement right compete agreement it is called it abstaining from performance of a service under a convenient not to compete okay will be treated as a performance of service for the rule means whatever extra amount which i'm going to get for non performing of the services that amount will be included in my income okay that is a fringe benefit received in connection with the performance of service or for not performing services both will be added as my income okay so uh, the next one is group term life insurance policy this is important whenever a insurance is taken by the employer for all the employees let's say a group of 10 employees the employer has taken a life insurance policy or a term life insurance policy for let's say 5 years 6 years term life means what for a particular certain number of years right and the, the coverage of this all 10 employees is within 50000 then it will not be included in the employee's income as a benefit see any benefit given by the employer to the employee will be included in the income but because it's a term life insurance and if it is within 50000 then it is not going to be included in the income okay got it guys but if it is more than 50000 this coverage 50000 means what the cost incurred by the employer is more than 50000 then it will be included in the income there will be two three tricky mcqs based on this group term life insurance policy they will provide you the whole amount of coverage right and uh, let's say 10 employees are there and if the amount of coverage is more than 50000 you will have to check what is the cost what is the actual cost which employer is incurring for the employees okay and then uh, find out the amount see here it is mentioned taxable amount is coverage amount minus amount paid to purchase it see coverage is different thing premium payment is different thing okay so if the coverage is more than 50000 let's say on 1 lakh dollar has been has been covered okay but the cost of taking this coverage is just 80000 okay so this 80000 dollar is the cost which will be added to the employees income remember this thing okay so in mcqs make sure to solve it accordingly don't take the whole 1 lakh and divide it by 10 employees take 80000 and divide it by 10 employees okay it is provided by the employer or the former employer if employer must report the amount on the w2 form okay means if it's a taxable coverage when it will be taxable if the coverage is more than 50000 then you will have to include it on your w2 form then we have employer paid premium for whole life or permanent insurance are included on the employees income okay if employer paid the premium for the whole life let's say employer has taken the employees insurance premium for the whole life not for the term life not for the fixed life for the whole life uh, or their permanent insurance are included in the employees income it will be included in the there you will not check the coverage and everything if it's a term life then only you will check whether it is less than 50000 or more than 50000 if the whole life is covered for the employee the whole amount will be added in the income okay got it guys next is restricted property here we have done this thing very well in the class whenever the employer is going to provide some property stock securities to the employee and there is a restriction that the employee will not be selling this thing this shares or securities this property in the market before completion of the 2 years can i say there is a lock in period to sell that particular security in that we have done 83b election okay i'll come to it uh, restricted property will be taxable in the year of grant date let's say in 2022 it has been granted it will be included in the income what will be the income that is the fmv of the property received year of grant date but it will be taxable in the later year if it is a restricted property if you receive a property which carries some restrictions let's say they have restricted 2 years like after 2 years the property will be 
can be sold or can be utilized for some other purpose okay then it will be taxable in the later year substantially when you vest the interest in that particular property okay got it guys but here the exception is see what will happen when you record the property after let's say five year restriction is there and that is appreciated property let's say you receive a building or uh, any other uh, land or building you receive and after five years when you check the value now it is going to be increased very uh, on a very higher side so at that time when you're going to increase the fmb it will be a very costly it will be a very huge loss for the employee right because you're receiving in the year one so you have the option to go and elect 83b and include include that restricted property as income on the date of the grant date so 83b can election which can be made within 30 days of the grant date the irs treats the restricted property uh, restricted stock dividend as a compensation and not as a dividend income so let's say you received a securities or shares and it's a restricted property you cannot sell it but on this shares and security you are going to receive a dividend income so whatever is the dividend income it will not be included as a 1099 div it will be included in your W-2 as a compensation because it's on the restricted stock, restricted property. Later on, after five years, when you vest that particular shares and securities, when you uh, the restrictions is removed, at that time when you receive the dividend, it will be considered as a normal dividend, normal passive income. Right now, it is included in your W-2. So, it's your ordinary income. Okay, got it guys. Restricted property we have already done in the class. Very well, please refer that material again. Next is stock option, most important and the examiner's second favorite topic, stock option. They will ask you a few questions on the stock. If you are going to receive a non-statutory stock, that is non-qualified stock, then the treatment is different. And if you receive a statutory stock, that is inst incentive stock option, means when employer is going to provide some stock to the employee. Let's read about the second one that is statutory or incentive stock option. Employee will not have any income until they sell or exchange the stock. Okay, let's say employer has provided, has granted a particular shares and securities to the employee and there is no restriction. They can sell at any time. But let's say employee is not selling it right now. It uh, They are going to sell it in the future. Let's say after three years or five years. Okay. So it's an incentive stock option. Then in that case, employee will not have any income until they sell or exchange the stock. Unless and until they sell it in the future year, they will not have any income or expense. But as and when they are going to sell it, capital gain tax rate will be applicable at that time when they sell it because this is a normal treatment right shares and securities are liable for the capital gain so in future year when they are going to sell the shares and securities capital gain tax rate will apply if employee holds now here the option is you should hold the shares and securities for at least more than one year from the date of exercise plus more than two years from the grant date okay if these two conditions are fulfilled then only it is called as iso incentive stock option and if it is incentive stock option then capital gain rate tax will be applicable and right now it is not included in the w2 or anywhere okay it's a stock option and if it's an incentive stock option employee will include in the income at the time of sales and the sales will be done in how many uh, till how much period is more than one year from the date of exercise exercise i'm repeating exercise word is mentioned and for two years grant date from the date of the grant till two years you have to calculate plus from the date of exercise right you have given the option by the employer it's your choice whether you need to exercise or you need to lapse okay so when you exercise it from that calculate one year from the date of grant calculate two years if you hold the share for at least this much period of time then it will be capital gain if you sell before two years of the grant date or before one year of the exercise date it will be called as ordinary income okay ordinary income means ordinary rate tax rates will be applicable in capital gain tax rate the tax rates are different if you remember zero percent fifteen percent right that all uh, exceptional special tax rates will be applicable in case of capital gain but once it is called as ordinary income it will be added in your normal slab rate okay what is now non-statutory or non-qualified plan the option is treated similarly to other property means you are going to include when you receive a non-statutory plan from your employer you are going to include the fmv in your wages income 
okay include the fmv in the income and if the fmv is not available then what you are going to do amount to be included will depend upon the exercise option whether you are going to exercise it or whether you are going to sell it when you exercise it the exercise price will be taken when you are going to sell it the sales price will be uh, like whatever is the sales price or disposal price option whatever is available you are going to take it as a wage income in your w2 form got it guys now what do you mean by non statutory see statutory means what uh, all the policies are same for all the employees right for employer when they are coming out with the with this option stock option they keep the same policies for each and every employee that is a statutory option plan incentive stock option if they came up with a separate separate uh, you know standards for different different employees for highly compensated employees they have different treatments then for them it is called as non statutory non qualified plan okay this is the way you are going to treat and this is important guys when you receive any question based on this please make sure you read it carefully whether it is statutory whether it is non statutory see why we are doing this in the chat format na it, it it should be easier for you to figure out from which topic the question is asked the question will not be asked on topic based in exam all the 100 questions will be asked from any xyz topic so please read the first two lines and you will understand that which chart you need to apply in that question okay so this was about the stock option next important most important is tip income people actually find a little bit difficult in understanding this topic but it's very easy to uh, understand we have one just a small uh, technique you have to remember whenever you receive a tip income okay what is tip income apart from wages if you are going to receive a extra earning from your customers let's say you are working in a restaurant industry right in that case your customer pays you certain tip and if that tip is more than 20 dollar during the month during per month you have to calculate if the earnings of the tip income is more than 20 dollar then in the next month let's say i have earned the tip income in the month of january for 25 dollar so in next month that is feb till 10th of the next feb i will have to report this tip income to my uh, employer so that my employer can add it in the wages calculation okay but let's say if it is less than 20 dollar then there is no requirement to report that tip income to the employer and employer is not going to include it in the wages but when you file the tax return let's say i have received tip income of just 10 dollar when you when you are going to file the tax return i will have to include this 10 dollar as a income as a taxable income in my tax return this tip income just provide you the reporting requirement whether you need to report it to the employer or not okay when you are going to report it to the employer till the 10th of the next month now what will happen if it's a december month right if it's a december month then what is the due date to report it to the employer it is 10th of jan now you have to remember this date in case of december tip and mostly the question will be based on december month tip only because most uh, complexities are there in this only when you are liable to report when you are liable to report when your uh, per month income a uh, per month tip income is 20 dollar or more when you are liable to report the tip income right and you report it before 10th of next month means before 10th jan if you report it then what will happen it will be included in the jan month means it will be included as a income in next year okay let's say 2022 in december i received the tip income but i reported it uh, i have to report it in the next year before 10th jan okay so i reported it within time before 10th jan then this tip income will be included in my 2023 tax return in 22 it will not be taxable got it guys now when it will be included in 22 tax return let's say i have to report it before 10th jan but i reported it after 10th jan okay so delay in reporting will cause the taxability of tip income in the same year of receipt which is mentioned over here c it will be included tip income will be included in the income all the tips received directly charge tips paid by the employer what what all tips will be included all the tips which are going to receive directly by the customer charge tips which are paid by the employer let's say all the tips are collected and then they are distributed to different uh, employees that is also called as tip splitting or tip pooling arrangement all those tips will be uh, liable for tip reporting non cash tips such as ticket passes or any other items 
based on their value you'll have to report it as a income okay now what are the records which need to be kept by the employee employee being an employee when i'm receiving the tip i'll have to keep the daily tip record rep, uh, rec report the cash and charge tips on the uh, to the employers on the 10th of the next month if my wage income is or uh, tip income is 20 dollar or more okay if it's a non cash tip okay if it's a non cash tip then i don't have to report it to the employer but it's a non cash tip it will be included in the income see remember understand the difference between the uh, what to be included and what is reported in uh, or maintained by the employee record to be maintained by the employee while maintaining the record you don't have to report the non cash uh, tips okay but when you re record it in your tax return you have to include all the tips as an income okay now next is report all the tips on the income tax return as i mentioned 1040 return you'll have to report it and it should be reported to the employer before 31st december but let's say if it is reported to the employer after 31st december will be reflected on the employee's w2 in the following year but there is one exception uh, if you report it before 10th of Jan, it will be included in the following year. After 10th of Jan, if you report, delay in reporting the tip income, it will be included in the 2022 tax year. This is the example which is mentioned over here. You can just quickly go through it. Okay, so December tip reported on or before 10th of Jan, included in the income in the month of Jan. Okay, taxable in the next year. But December tip which is reported after 10th of Jan, delay in reporting, it will be included in the income in the month of December and it will be taxable in 22 only okay form 4137 will be given by the employee to the employer as a written report for all the cash tips how how the employee is going to report it to the employer they will have to file a 4137 form with the employer okay uh, tips reported on the employer on the time are considered as the income in the month reported okay and when it is reported in a delayed month then it will be included as a income in which the tips are received okay so here in our example it was included in the december month and if it is reported on time then the month in which it is reported it will be included as an income why i i took so much time on this topic because sit tip income there will be one or two questions which are very cash marks for you guys in exams okay so just understand the difference between reporting and non-reporting of the tips in the tax return okay for employment taxes now whatever we have done let's just revise it quickly in case of fringe benefit fringe benefit how it will be done uh, if you receive a accident and health benefits then income tax withholding will be exempt what do you mean by income tax withholding means federal income tax will not be deducted on accident and health insurance benefit which you receive then when you are going to uh, receive the health and insurance benefit, health and accident benefit no social security no medicare no additional medicare will be included exempt exempt means it is not liable puta will not be liable on the accident and health plan okay exception is given that is for a long-term care benefit provided through a flexible spending or a similar arrangement we have already done the meaning in the class uh this is just a revision lecture so i'll just this purpose of this lecture is just to make you revise the topics which we have already done. I'm not going to take each and every topic in detail. Okay. So type of fringe benefits, if it's an accident or health benefit plan, it will be exempt from any withholding. It will be exempt from federal income tax, exempt from social security, Medicare and FUTA taxes. Achievement awards. Now here it is up to 1600. Do you remember in prizes and awards we have done? up to 1600 if it's a qualified plan what was qualified plan which is same for all the employees right 1600 dollars will be exempt more than 600 dollars if you're paying then it will be taxable as an income as a wage income for the employee employee okay now 1600 was the total amount and 400 dollar was for the non-qualified awards okay 1600 dollars was the total award out of that 400 is for non-qualified plan and remaining amount will be allocated for a qualified plan okay but the total award total award achievement award amount is 1600 there were uh, two three more criterias which you have seen that in last five years the award should be given only once okay more than once if you are going to receive you don't receive this exception okay up to 1600 dollars uh, you can get the achievement award okay next is athletic facilities if it is given by the employer 
to the employee uh, on their organization like at the infrastructure then it is exempt from federal income tax futa and uh, medicare and social security tax okay adoption assistance if it is provided then it is exempt from federal income tax but for medicare and social security it is taxable and futa also it is liable okay for adoption assistance it happens that the employer will be providing some uh, adoption assistance to the employees then in that case this three things you have to consider okay then we have de minimis benefits small small benefits like uh, like uh, food beverages which are provided at the time of uh, uh, your employment tea coffee is provided so see some de minimis amounts are all exempt from the federal medicare and futa okay dependent care assistance is exempt up to certain limit which is 5000 and if you remember about first session if you file a mfs this dependent care benefit will reduce to 2500 dollars and when you when you are going to get this dependent care benefit what will happen is when you are going to pay the dependent care expense you remember the credit dependent credit right all the qualified expense you will take and you are going to reduce the dependent care assistance which has been provided by the employer to you which is five thousand dollars or maybe twenty five hundred you are going to reduce it and remaining amount only will be allowed as a credit this we have already seen so dependent care benefit if it is provided by the employee to the employee up to five thousand it is exempt from this three taxes okay from uh, federal income tax medicare social security and futa taxes if you receive a educational assistance okay this was dependent this was educational assistance if you receive it will be exempt up to 5250 for each benefit for each year okay employee discounts if you are going to receive any employee discount it will be exempt up to certain level what is the limit what is the limit it will be mentioned it is mentioned by the irs that it will be excluded from your wages if if that discount which is provided to you on the service is up to 20 percent of the price which is charged to the normal employee. so can i say up to 20 percent of the discount is allowed second thing the employer don't have to incur any additional cost for giving that discount okay third is uh, for discount or merchandise or other property your gross profit percentage times the price you charge to non-employee customers for the property should be similar means maximum just remember like this maximum 20 percent discount the employer can provide to the employee let's say i'm working in any supermarket store okay so in that uh, store uh, uh, if i want to buy certain product i have an employee code right using that i can get a 20 percent discount so that 20 percent discount which i'm going to get on that i'm not going to charge employer is not going to charge me any federal income tax medicare social security or futa taxes okay this is what it is saying next is group term life insurance we already saw it is exempt right from federal income tax but it will be taxable if the cost is the coverage cost again i'm mentioning coverage cost is different cost of taking the insurance is different and coverage is different okay so you have to check the coverage amount if it is more than fifty thousand for all whole group then the cost will be added as a wage income for the employee and it will be taxable for medical and social security taxes okay futa and fit is not applicable but medicare and social security will be charged if the coverage goes more than fifty thousand okay Next is health saving account. If employer is providing certain health saving account for the employee, then it is exempt for qualified individuals up to HSA contribution limit. We will see that when we do the HSA topic, right? Additional uh, some adjustment to income. We'll see that topic in the adjustments to income. Over there, it is mentioned that for calendar year 2023, qualifying HDHP means what uh, a qualified health saving account if you are depositing certain amount then it will be deducted up to 1500 for self only coverage and 3000 for a family coverage and out of pocket expense allowed is 7500 and 15000 so don't worry right now don't stress out on this topic we'll do it again when we do the adjustment to income the idea is just to make you understand if employer is taking the health saving account for the employee then federal income tax medicare social security futa taxes will not be liable on this that's why on w2 form when you receive a w2 form there is a box number 12 on the w2 form uh, you know on those items social security futa federal income tax is not liable is added on the uh, box number 12 of your w2 form
okay those who are working practically they might have seen the box number 12 over there okay lodging on your business premises okay so let's say the company has provided you a lodging facility let's say for example it's a tax season and the cpa firm has told that no one will go home 15 days you will be living in the same organization over there they will give you some facilities to uh, leave over there for 15 days but it should be for the business purpose okay or let's say second example if they send you somewhere in the client meetings or some conferences and that is for business purpose so lodging on the business premises okay let's say uh, in they send you some other uh, state okay let's say if your headquarter is in california but now they are sending you in new jersey so in new jersey when they are sending you over there in the office premises only in the designated premises you are staying over there completing the work for 10 days or 5 days all the expenses are incurred by the organization so lodging on the business premises will be exempt from the federal income tax again i'll write it over here federal income tax uh, social security and medicare and puta okay got it guys meals are exempt is furnished on your business premises at uh, for the uh, you know employer convenience let's say on the tax in the tax season if employer is providing you some food right on saturdays and sundays if you're working and they provide the meals the dinner the lunch they are being providing then it is exempt because it is at the uh, convenience of the employer at the business premises okay no additional cost services if extra something they are providing to you on for which they don't have to incur any additional cost then it is exempt from federal income tax social security and puta okay retirement planning services this is planning services okay so they have hired a retirement planning company or an agency and they are just providing them the services for uh, you know uh, educating them for how to save money and all so that is exempt okay transportation services will be exempt up to certain limits if for rides in commuter highway vehicle means uh, employer is going to pay a fixed uh, amount for your transportation okay so how much will be exempt transit pass if you are going to get the up to 300 dollar it will be exempt or if you receive a qualified parking up to 300 dollar it will be exempt okay tuition or reduction tuition reduction if you are going to get then it will be exempt if you undergo education or certain uh, you know research related activities which will be used in your uh, business purpose okay so that tuition fees which will be incurred the sponsorship i can say which will be incurred by the organization for you will be exempt from any federal income tax social security medicare and the food taxes okay working condition benefit so let's say if they provide you certain benefits that if, if you're working late night and uh, for that you will be given this this benefits so all those extra benefit working condition benefit will be exempt from all these three okay got it guys additional point you can just read it uh it's just a simple uh i can say there was a there were some changes as compared to 2021 and 22 so you can just read this additional point from your book next is special rules for certain employees now we are coming to the clergy employees this is also an important they will ask you at least one or two questions uh, based on taxability of the uh, wages of the church employee okay a uh, clergy employee for them what will happen whatever they are going to earn okay if they are working in the church and they're not go going to uh, get any income or anything then it doesn't matter but if they are working in the church and they are going to receive a particular salary or fees for performing particular activities right for performing masses marriages baptism funerals then it will be liable as a wages it will be added as a wage income now sometimes what happens those those ministers are there the, they are called as audient ministers they receive housing and pension facilities also the pension will be treated as a regular pension okay but in case of housing facilities if they are going to receive the housing facilities like rental home utilities designated housing allowance all will be excluded from the income means all this will not be included in their w2 right it will not be included as a wages or salaries but all this will be included as a schedule c as a self-employed income and on this self-employment taxes will be applicable if you have a church employee who is having income of more than 108.28 then mandatory you will have to pay the self-employment tax on the whole earnings which you are going to earn from the uh, church okay and this is applicable only in case of service rendered as the audience or licensed or commissioned minister got it guys 
uh, this is simple you just have to check whether uh, whether a person is going to uh, get any housing facility then included in schedule c whether a person is going to receive any amount directly from the church okay included as a income now there can be two things which can be done by the uh, that audient minister service performed for the order and service performed outside the order if the services are performed for the order then the wages as wages it will be included as a wages a member earns as an agent for an order and turns over to the order are not included in the income means if you are performing the services based on the order of the church okay and whatever income you are going to earn the whole income is going to be uh, given back to the church so it will not be included in the wages okay but always perform outside the order uh, let's say you are just working somewhere as a tax preparer or uh, just as a uh, you know some consultant or advocate or somewhere as a legal or anywhere you are working but that is outside the service outside the order of the church okay church has not ordered you to do perform this service and perform that service and then when you are earning certain amount let's say you are earning a thousand dollars out of that two hundred dollars you are keeping with yourself and the whole eight hundred dollars you are giving it to the church that doesn't mean that whole thousand dollars is exempt from the taxes the thousand dollars will be liable to wage income will be chargeable to tax because you are performing service outside the order this eight hundred dollar which you are then donating to that church going to deposit that amount to the church will be considered as a charitable contribution okay so it is mentioned here the whole thousand dollar will be included in the income the exception is services that are ordinarily the duties of the members of the order okay plus they are the part of duties that the member must exercise for religious order okay uh, let's say there is a, there is a particular facility at the church on every friday they uh, they used to serve the needy people the food and clothing and everything okay so you are just servicing over there on behalf of the church okay so that thing on behalf of the church and if you are receiving any donation or anything right uh, for that food and clothing for any third party then that will not be your income that is directly going to be a part of the church donation okay but let's say you are earning some income on your own skill okay based on your skills and uh, you're working somewhere and whatever income you're earning Although you are going to deposit certain amount to the church, eight hundred dollar, this thousand dollar first will be fully taxable, and then for eight hundred dollar which you are depositing, you can get the charitable deduction for that amount. Okay, that is the definition of the clergy. How the treatment will be done in case of clergy and the member of religious orders. For foreign employers and employees, we'll do it tomorrow when we start the foreign transaction, foreign related topic. Okay. Military pay. When you being a military uh, employee, when you re receive any amount, you will have to report the payment received as a service member as a wages. You will have to report it as a wages for the tax purpose. Except for any retirement pay, which is taxable as a pension. Only retirement pay which you are going to receive will be taxable as a pension. Right after you retire from the military services, you start receiving the pension that will be taxable as a pension income on your 1040 form only. But when you receive during the time of services, any payment received will be included as a normal treatment that is W-2 wage income. Got it guys? This is for certain different types of employer. Only the foreign employer will do it later on together with the foreign tax credit and foreign on income exclusion. Next is guys interest income. We still have 30 minutes and uh, I hope we can complete the gross income topic today so that tomorrow we will left with the other topics. Interest income will include certain amount which will be taxable and certain amount which will not be taxable first let's see what is non-taxable non-taxable but it will be included on 1040 form do you remember on 1040 form you have uh, line 2a line 2b 3a 3b so the inner line is non-taxable the outer line is taxable so right now what will be the non-taxable interest income if it is received uh, to you by a municipal bond that is state or local government federal municipal bond is taxable they will twist these words in the exam federal related bonds are taxable guys only and only state and local related bonds local government bonds are exempt okay so those interest income which you are going to receive from that kind of bond which is a state or a local government bond that will be exempt second type of interest will be exempt if you receive it 
series E E bond means if you use this bond, these are the series E E bond. The amount when you redeemed the uh, amount from this bond, and if it is used for qualified purpose, what is the qualified purpose for series E E bond? It is higher education. When you get the redemption amount, okay, or you get the interest amount. any amount which you receive from this series e bond is used for the higher education purpose this will be exempt so only these two exceptions are there where interest income will be exempt interest income will be shown on a form 1099b and in the tax return it will be shown on the schedule b okay so what is the what is the limit like when it will be taxable if you receive a interest income of more than 1500 dollar it will be taxable and in some cases it will be more than 10 dollar and more than 20 dollars we'll see that over here the taxability is mentioned on the left side interest on federal bonds as i mentioned if it's a state and local government then it will be exempt but on federal bond it will be taxable premium received on opening the account so this 10 and 20 dollar is regarding the opening the bank account so what is this over there in us will give you a premium let's say they'll say you you deposit 5000 dollar you'll get a opening balance of 5020 dollar so the 20 dollars extra which you get in your account now it is a premium which you are receiving for opening a bank account okay so that premium which you are going to receive is your interest income third one is interest for the late payment of the tax refund when you are going to receive a refund and if the federal or the state or the local government fails to pay you the refund on time they will also pay you the interest so for that you receive a 1099g in that interest column is mentioned with an amount that uh, on this refund you have received this much interest okay so whatever interest you are going to receive from even from the federal government for the refund amount will be added as a interest income interest on the deferred payout arrangement means what uh, when a person uh, when a person dies right his insurance policy gets matured now is it's it's not possible for the beneficiary to take out the whole insurance amount and utilize it so what they will do they will take that insurance amount in in let's say 3 month 4 month in different different installments they are going to withdraw the amount so till the time whatever earnings are there on the interest income it will be the included as a interest income by way of interest on deferred payout arrangement here one example is there mr x died but this nominee gets the amount okay so if the nominee has the option that they can get the 1 million dollars today or they can accumulate it within next 20 days they, they are not going to use the whole 1 1 million dollar on the same day so what they did is they had the option to accumulate the whole 1 million dollars for 20 years so after 20 years you will not receive the exact 1 million there is a time value of money right so you are going to receive 1.2 million dollar so extra 0.2 million which you are going to receive is your defer payout even though you are get, getting it in, as a lump sum after 20 years the whole 0.2 million is your interest income and it will be included in your schedule b as a interest income uh, interest on deferred payout i will see okay interest for seller financed mortgage means uh, let's say i am selling my property okay i am selling it to uh, some other person on a installment basis so while i am giving it in the installment basis i will be taking certain charging certain interest on that right so that interest which is financed by the seller i am the seller it is a seller financed mortgage that interest income i'll include it in the schedule b and rest all amount which i am going to get as an installment i'll bifurcate it between the cost basis and the selling price basis if you remember we have done that installment sales right first remove the whole interest amount include it on the schedule b whatever is the remaining will bifurcate it between the cost and the selling price cost will not be charged to capital gain but the remaining profit percentage gp percentage if you remember right will be charged as a income as a capital gain got it guys next is original issue discount now this will happen in case of uh, if you receive a bond and the redemption value is higher uh, in that case you have the extra benefit right so that oid original issue discount let's say uh, one of the uh, bond has been issued at 98 dollars but when it is getting redeemed it is redeemed at 150 dollars so what what is the case over here is the extra amount which you are going to get at the time of redemption is your benefit so you'll have to include it as a interest income but there is one condition and remember this is important there will be one question on this topic you have to apply the formula what is the redemption value of that particular shares or security or bond okay take the redemption value 
reduce the issue price which is 19 in our case whatever is the difference if it is up to this amount what is the amount redemption value that is 150 dollar into 1 percent into number of years the bond was having the life of let's say 10 years or 5 years multiply the number of years multiply by 0 0.25 okay first of all when you receive this type of question now first calculate this thing okay redemption amount into 1 percent into number of years into 0 0.25 if if your redemption value minus issue price if it is up to this value then no need to make it taxable it's a exempt interest but you receive the benefit of more than this more than what redemption value into one percent into years into 0.25 more than that this if you receive the amount right here the second scenario will apply if you receive more than this what is the value redemption minus issue price it will be taxable and capital gains will be chargeable at the time of maturity at the time of taking this type of bond you will be charging the interest income and when you sell this type of bond at that time you will be paying a capital gain tax later on okay now here one more thing i missed was in case of interest income you know sometimes it happened that two people are uh, having the account as a joint account okay in one bank so it's called as joint saving account in the name of one taxpayer right they are going to receive a 1098 1099 int right interest income so let's say me and my sister are holding the uh, bank account in joint right and whenever they're going to pay the interest they will issue a 1099 int in my name because maybe i am the primary holder so in my name they have issued the int but this interest income is having equal rights for me and my sister right so what will happen is uh, I will have to pay her share to her, uh, to her and also I will be issuing 1099 INT to her as a payment made to her. Okay, so only my portion will be taxable in my return, her portion will be taxable in her return. So that is what it is mentioned in case of nominees, this will happen. Okay, in case of joint return. Next is dividend and other corporate distribution. This is very simple to understand. I know that there is a lot of theory in our book uh like uh, from the class notes please do read the theory but right now just understand the the quick concept which will be helpful in in solving the exam uh, questions okay see dividend will be taxable or non-taxable or it can be considered as a capital gain distribution or one more is a qualified dividend this will do later like first let's do first three points either it can be taxable either it can be non-taxable or either there can be a capital gain distribution on the dividend when it will be taxable when you receive a cash or kind distribution out of the retain earning this is the normal dividend layman's language when you receive a distribution from the retain earning retain earning means the profit of the company when you receive a distribution that is your ordinary income for this you will be receiving 1099 div from the company you will be including it as a ordinary income in your tax return okay now let's read the capital gain one okay when you are going to receive distribution which is more than the face value okay so difference between the face value and the amount of distribution will be your capital gains means let's say my face value was hundred dollar okay hundred dollar and i am going to receive a dividend of hundred and ten dollar so up to hundred dollar it will be recorded as an ordinary income that is taxable the extra ten dollar which i am going to receive uh, will be considered as my capital gain this is what it is saying and it will be chargeable at a capital gain tax rate 0 percent 15 percent 20 percent okay we'll see that later on for the second one is non-taxable uh, that is called as a tax-free dividend okay means what return of capital up to the amount you are putting into the company okay up to that amount it is tax free dividend these normally happens in case of corporations when you are going to receive a distribution at the time of closure of company liquidation of a company at that time whenever you are going to receive it it is a non-taxable or a tax free dividend as soon as now your distribution goes higher than the basis i can say then it will be taxable as a capital gain okay return of capital up to the amount put in the company second one in this is stock split and stock dividend it is totally non-taxable and most important is this point only in this whole topic dividend topic stock split and stock dividend is the important topic where uh, see what will happen whenever uh, let's say i have five shares of ten dollars 
so can i say my value of all this five shares is 50 dollars right so now what will happen on this five share i receive a stock split one share uh, i receive a stock split for one share uh, for one existing share so what will happen for 10 shares i am not going to recount the per price per share cost but this 50 dollars will be carried over here same as it is only the per price will get changed that i will consider it as a five dollar my stock splitting is done but the cost of the total cost will remain same only i have to split is per per share cost like this okay that is stock split same way stock dividend stock dividend we have few criteria we'll see over here yeah stock and stock rights if you are going to receive right and if it is only for common stock then only it is non-taxable the question will be straight away when theory question will be there based on this topic stock and stock rights only common stock are there now then it is non-taxable if you have the option to buy either common or preferred then it will be wholly taxable right if you have the option to buy only preferred stock then it will be taxable here the taxability is there okay dividend whether it will be taxable or non-taxable what we did is uh, that it will be non-taxable but if it's a stock dividend and if you receive that stock dividend for the option of common stock then only it will be non-taxable if it is for preferred plus common or you have the option to buy either preferred or common or you have option to buy only preferred stock then all three cases it will be taxable okay got it guys i hope everyone is understanding this third uh, the last point is qualified dividend what do you mean by qualified dividend it is if it is paid by the u.s corporation or a qualified foreign corporation and if you are holding the stock for at least more than 60 days more than 60 days out of 121 days starting from this day means out of total 121 days starting from the 60 days previous to the ex dividend date let me explain it again see if you are holding a stock for at least 60 days right out of 121 days now this 121 days will be starting from 60 days previous to the ex dividend date this is a dividend date okay now this dividend date from that you have to previous calculate 60 days so this will be your total 121 days within this 121 days if you are holding the stock for at least 60 days plus the dividend is paid by the u.s corporation or a qualified foreign corporation then it will be called as a qualified dividend on this the tax rate applicable will be 10 15 20 if you have seen the tax slab rate for a normal individual the slab rate will be 20 percent 20 22 percent 25 percent 27 percent 37 percent it will go it it's it's very huge slab rate will which will go maximum to 37 percent so there you have to check that those who are having a slab rate of 0 to 10 percent maximum 10 percent will be applicable for qualified dividend if you have a slab rate from 11 to 15 percent you will have to apply maximum 15 percent on that tax uh, uh, or as a qualified dividend tax rate more than 15 percent whatever is the whatever is your slab rate you have to check on which slab rate you are falling if it is more than 15 even if it is 25 27 37 maximum qualified dividend tax rate will be 20 percent this is what the tax rate which will be used for qualified dividend that is special tax rate same concept is there in case of capital gain when we do the capital gain topic property transaction topic there we will see that 0%, 15%, 20% tax rate are there for a long term capital gain. For short term capital gain tax rate are not applicable. Guys, remember if you have if you have done the session lectures, you might have understood that topic. Short term capital gain is your ordinary gain tax rate will be applicable. For long term capital gain, these three types of tax rate will be applicable. And how they will be applicable that will be based on which slab you are falling okay zero percent or maybe uh 15 percent 20 percent 22 percent 25 27 37 whatever is the percentage you are going to take the lowest one okay let's say if it's more than 15 you have to take 15 more than 20 maximum 20 only you will charge not not as an ordinary tax rate 
that is the benefit of a qualified dividend dividend will be chargeable to tax if it's a normal cash or kind distributions out of the retain earning if it is more than your face value it will be called as a capital gain distribution if it's a capital gain distribution capital gain tax rate will be applicable right when it will be not taxable if it's a stock split stock dividend stock dividend only common stock will be taken preferred or the combination of both will not be taken and if it's a return of capital means let's say you have invested hundred dollar into 50 so five thousand dollars when the company is getting liquidated or you know shut down then when you are going to receive a distribution up to your basis amount it is a return of capital right so it will be non-taxable more than that it will be called as a capital gain distribution got it guys i hope capital uh sorry dividend uh is clear ira we have already done yesterday now only two small topics are left i'll take it quickly social security is also done rental income see rental income is is very simple you have to check that when you're going to receive a rent income right you have to make it chargeable to tax in your schedule e schedule e will be you know showing all your gross rental income any prepaid rental income right non refundable deposits are there plus any improvements you are making in the lien of rent means if a person if a person who is going to imp uh, you know instead of paying you rent they made some improvements in your rental income uh, sorry in at your home okay so improvements instead of paying you rent that will be also considered as a rental income any amount received for the tenant which will be paid by the taxpayer let's say rental real estate taxes which should be paid by the owner but now it is paid by the person who is living in the house right so all the real estate taxes will be added as an income first and then from the rental expense it will get reduced all the rental related expense means any repairs maintenance utilities any amount of taxes which you are going to pay will be reduced as a rental expense okay so this is the amount which you will receive is a net rental income or loss now this since so day one i'm mentioning rent is a passive 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 activity it's a passive income passive income so it can be offset let's say there is a loss so this loss can be offset against only and only passive income not against the ordinary income but we have an exception irs has came up with the law that if you follow this rule then this passive income sorry this passive loss can be offset against the ordinary income else it is not allowed okay what is the rules let's say if you have rented your property for less than 15 days right and you are going to regard this rental property as a deemed personal property means it will not be called as a renting business it is a personal property in that case whatever rent you are going to receive for less than 15 days you have rented right so whatever rental income you have received it will not be chargeable to income no taxes will allowed to be deducted no deduction will be allowed for depreciation or any other expense only and only municipal taxes means real estate taxes and mortgage interest will be allowed to be taken on a schedule a because we have seen like we will see in the upcoming division lectures but in regular class you might have seen schedule a is all related to your uh, this personal related expense some personal expenses are allowed one of them is your real estate taxes and mortgage interest so these two amounts you can deduct easily from your uh, uh, you know schedule a if you are rented the property for less than 15 days okay now if you have rented the property for more than 15 days then there the situation will come that when you are going to offset your loss okay if you have rented the property for more than 15 days what will happen and it is also used for personal purpose now you have to check till what time have you used the property for the personal purpose is it used for more than 14 days or more than 10 percent of the rented days let's say during the whole year 365 days i have rented my property for 300 days so 300 into 10 percent is what 30 days whether i have used the property for personal use for 30 days or more or more than 14 days if yes then it will be deemed as a personal personal come real property means whatever income i'm going to earn i'll have to allocate it between the personal use days and the rented days personal use days whatever is amount allocated to personal use days that will not be added as a income but 
against that rental loss will also be not allowed or no expense will be allowed you have to proportionate your rental property between the person use days and the business days now what will happen whatever is the rental expense which can be deducted will include will include insurance premium paid on advance is non deductible insurance premium remember this thing advance if you are paying insurance premium for your property it will not be deductible cost of repair yes it is deductible as an expense any improvement which you are ma making for or any expense that you are in, uh, you know using to increase the value of the property means any capital expense if you are making we will apply de minimis rule okay what is de minimis safe harbor rule that up to 2500 you will expense it off in pnl if you incur more than this amount you are going to include it as a uh, as the asset and on that you can claim easily the depreciation expense okay and for cost of improvement it should be more than 200 dollar and any any additional part you are adding it should be more than 2500 dollar to add it as a capital expense it will not be deductible means it will be added as a capital expense okay now let's see in case of rental activity loss it should be set off only and only against passive income we still have six minutes we'll complete the rental property topic okay so can be set off against ordinary only and only if you are working for more than 50 percent of work is involved in real property and your participation is more than 750 hours means you are actively participating in the schedule e business then only you will be able to offset your rental expense sorry rental losses against the ordinary loss but the condition is you have to see this condition there will be one question on this they will provide you a lot of conditions you have to check whether you are devoting more than 50 percent uh 50 percent of work is involved in real property and your participation is at least 750 hours plus the loss which is there you know when you calculate this you now the loss has to be less than 25,000. then up to 25 see they have given the limit up to 25,000 only you can deduct as a rental loss from your ordinary uh income okay so rental loss up to 25000 can be deducted and both spouse should actively participate now here the phase out limit will come into consideration if your modified agi is up to 1 lakh the whole 25000 loss you can deduct okay 25000 or actual amount of loss not the whole flat amount is not there it is whichever is lower you can deduct it against the ordinary income you can set off against the ordinary income and the remaining loss will be set off against the passive income okay and then remaining will get carried forward to the upcoming years now this is the condition if your modified EJ is more than one lakh what will happen maximum deduction will be ordinary income from that you are going to get a maximum deduction of whichever is lower what let's say one lakh fifty thousand is the highest limit see from one lakh to one fifty thousand if you are having a modified EJ, then you can get a reduced set off but if you are having an amount of modified AGI of more than 150,000, you can't set off any amount of rental loss against ordinary income. So what you are going to do, take 150,000, reduce the actual modified AGI which you are having, multiply it by 50%. Okay, so this is the phase out limit which you need to calculate that you are going to compare with the 25,000. Whichever is lower, you are going to reduce that much amount from your ordinary income. Okay, so the first you will reduce against ordinary income. Second, you are going to reduce the remaining loss against the passive income and remaining if you have any will be carried forward to the next years. Okay, now here uh, one more deduction you are going to get is auto expense. If you are expensing, uh, if you are using your uh, car or vehicle for rental purpose, then it will be reduced based on the standard mileage or actual mileage actual expense right actual fuel expense which you are incurring you can either take that deduction or you can take a standard mileage as a deduction what is the standard mileage for 2022 tax year from jan to 30th june whatever uh, mileage you have used the vehicle multiply it by 58.5 cent per mile and then from the next six months it will be 62.5 cent per mile okay total it up and up to that much amount you can take it as a standard deduction for the mileage okay next is business income and loss we'll uh, do it in the later session let me first check our uh, schedule 
okay so tomorrow actually we are going to start with the foreign related all the incomes and all uh when we do this now on 28th september see unearned income is done stock dividend is done stock split is done over here i'll take the schedule c again okay schedule e is done all the unearned income is done interest is done dividend is done stock dividend stock split is done schedule c is left we'll take it over here but tomorrow we'll be starting with the foreign income don't uh, miss tomorrow's session guys please uh, those who are also watching the recorded session for them also i'm talking that it might be possible the next three days session will get delayed in uploading on the youtube so please make sure to attend the live session uh, if possible okay anyways uh, those who have not received the book please ping me in personal already that has been dispatched but in case there is a delay i'll just check from my side okay guys uh thank you so much have a good day uh and please keep on solving a lot of mcqs please keep on revising on daily basis there is not much time left those who are having exams in october please read it on daily basis okay do follow the same sequence for easy understanding okay so yeah thank you guys have a good day Thank you.